Welcome to the workshop again. Uh, tonight's exercise is to make some uh, links for a vintage motorcycle, a uh, Humber motorcycle to be precise. These are the mechanism that allows the fork, the girder forks, to swing up and down in a parallel motion, if you like. Uh, there are four of them in total. Two small ones at the top, two large ones at lower down, and they have a left hand thread for the right hand side and a right hand thread for the right hand side. This is to prevent the lock nuts from unscrewing while the bike is in motion. Anyway, we'll proceed. Well here you see the, the screen, the Pathpilot screen. Uh, as you can see, they're basically this shape, bone shape if you like. A couple of holes on either end with some tabs to make it easy to cut out. What I'll do is cut them first, machine the holes all using profile cutting and then I'll go into Pathpilot Conversational and pick the screw threads to cut in here and here. So let's get on with it. Well I've got everything set up. Oh there's a status warning light on, let's see what that says. Oh, it exceeds y maximum Y axis by 0.3975 inches. Okay, there you see it. Well, we'll have to move the work to suit. Well, there we are, cutting that up. I've had to cut my speed, my feet back quite a bit. Initially, it was very aggressive. A lot of uh, bouncing around in the machine, but it's going okay now. So we'll see how it proceeds. This is just the first slot if you like. If you look here you'll see where it's cutting. It's doing this one now. And presumably it'll do that hole next, then this one, and then it'll move across to here, do this, that hole, and finally that. And I will see it again. I think it's about six passes in total. A lot, you can hear a lot of uh, cutting is being re-cut. I don't like the sound of it, but there's nothing much I can do. Uh, given the type of cooling that I've got, it's not, not exactly forceful. There's no way it's draining out of the bottom of the air yeah, through a hole either, so we'll just have to do with it. Here we are on the last part of the uh, first of the four links. As you can see on the screen, uh, we're just making our first pass on this last slot. I've done uh, these two, three, plus uh, three holes, plus three holes down here. As it gets deeper, it's really refeeding its own cuttings. Uh, I've already broken one cutter on the first slot, but this one seems to be surviving. I've cut back the RPM a little, and the feed is down at three and a half inches a minute. So uh, I think one of the problems is I've taken too deep a depth of cut. It's in seven passes over half an inch. Usually you play a little bit less than that, but anyway, we'll keep going and I'll show you the finished item when it's when it's done. So here we are, the footer's got about uh, maybe half an inch or so to go. That's the end of the job, or the end of the first one. Let's see, here we go. Alright, let's take a, a look see. Just got to find my brush. And now we can see, uh, it's done the job. Very deep, it's half an inch deep, this one's half inch plate, and I've cut it down to half inch. It's probably just a little bit, maybe a thou or two of metal in the bottom of there. But you can see why it was cutting or recutting itself many times over. That was pretty, pretty tough going for it. But anyway, the main thing is we've got one out. Now then, I think what I'll do is reposition the clamps and line up on this line here and start it up again. Well, after a, 
a long session, three hours or so, four hours. Finally got the profiles of these links for the forks cut. Next process will be to thin them down to the correct thickness. Probably I will have to separate them because the tabs are very small. There's no way I would want to risk surfacing them all down to thickness. With, you know, I think the danger would be that they would move while that was happening and cause damage to the machine. So I'll probably cut them off the plate, uh, thickness them individually. But uh, I'll see how it goes when I uh, finally make them. Well I opted to drill through the very small bit of metal that's left at the base of these profiles and clamp it in the machine vise and centre over each hole, enter the coordinates into path pilot and machine the threads using a mill. I'll do the first four left handed thread, the last four right handed thread. Uh, at the moment it's set up to drill or to do all eight in left hand mode but I'll stop it after four and then reset the program to do them in right hand. So it's looking pretty good. As you can see there's a little start here and zigzag across doing each one. So really we'll see how it goes. From what I've seen of the thread cutting on uh, Pathpilot it's very good, it works very well. So I've made up a plug gauge on the lathe just to make sure it fits using a nut from my 1927 motorcycle, this note here, and that is a tight fit on this. And it should, it's about the same as the fit on the forks, so the spindle should fit using that plug gauge. So we'll see. Well, we are cutting the threads first before thicknessing the plate to the correct thickness. And I thought that was the best way to do because there's enough metal here to be able to clamp it in the vise without distortion whereas if I try to thin it down I don't think there would be sufficient metal in the tabs to hold it so I decided I would cut the threads first you might notice this is the left arm thread I've got four left arm threads uh, these one, two, three, four here and then these four will be right hand threads um, it took quite a long time to actually get a desired fit by telling the machine that the cutter was smaller and smaller until eventually it cut large enough that my homemade test mandrel would fit. It's a left hand thread there, I don't know how it appears yet, which I put on the lathe before I started the job using the nut from the forks as a guide. So that's, it goes in, it's a nice, it's a, quite a tight fit but it's a very close fit and, and good, you know, so that's great, I'm quite happy with it. And there we go, another pass of the cutter. It's taken 10 passes to cut the thread, so it's quite a long process, but I'm not too bothered. It turns out nice anyway, the results are usually pretty good with this tool. Now, as you can see from the rotation of the work around the, the tool, the right hand threads are being cut on the last four holes, just two more to go. And they're a really good fit in the test bar that I made in the test thread, so I'm pretty happy with them. So you can see now we're at the final stages of making these links for the forks. The job is set up by using the soft jaws in the machine vise, which I've just managed to cut a little piece out of the jaws. However, I've now got it sorted out and it's cutting, it's thicknessing down the rough side, well not the rough side, but the side that wasn't fully machined through when I did the batch of four uh, using the screw cam program. This is just conversational programming using Path Pilot and uh, basically I'm uh, just telling it there's a square piece of, no, an oblong piece of bar in a vise and go machine it to a certain thickness. And that's the end result there, as you see. That's the tool path 
that it describes around the work. And it's got about four passes to make to get it down at the right. You can see the finished or almost finished articles. I've just got to get rid of the tabs on both ends. The ones on the sides I took off on the manual mill very quickly, very roughly actually. I'll just blend those in with a file and that's the job almost finished so I'll go ahead and well there we have the finished articles they've just been dressed up all the rough edges, or not rough edges but the sharp edges on the corners taken off with a light filing I've taken my because I milled the surfaces down uh, obviously there's no kind of lead into the thread so I uh, carefully <coughs> used uh, one of my little tools for taking the rough edges off around the hole and put my little plug gauge or my thread gauge that I made before I started the job through each hole just to make sure that it goes through and there's no problem with the crossing of threads or anything like that and I've also, you might notice there letter L which stands for left hand threads they go on the right hand side of the forks and the letter R if you can see it, yeah there we go uh, letter R just here and here indicate right hand threads and they go on the left hand side of the forks so that's it Another